Um, as you point out too, there's a rapidly growing um, set of smartphones and mobile devices. What is your view on how those devices start to change user behavior and, and what does that mean for the network? Google, for example, sees this as an important challenge to deliver products and services through the mobile path in addition to the more traditional one. So I see that as a very important evolution uh, in the internet. I'm also uh, anticipating that uh, people will continue to demand more functionality from their mobiles. So you know, operating systems like Android and, and others are uh, challenged to allow people to add more functionality to their mobiles than they currently have. These are no longer just telephones. They are clearly programmable devices. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, uh, you know, having uh, mobile devices to consume content or communicate in new ways is, is driving more demand for those devices. Uh, you know, you've been very articulate uh, on sort of how this technology is transforming certain industries. You know, specifically, you look at things like the entertainment industry and its delivery model or its business model. Um, how far does this notion of business model transformation go, and are there certain industries that you think it's more relevant than others? So this is a very interesting problem space, I think, because in, in history, most networks that were created were purpose-built for a particular application. The telephone network is an example. The cable television net is an example. The, uh, the telegraph network is an example. So internet comes along and it basically says, look, I really don't care what the underlying transmission technology is. I really don't know what the heck it is I'm carrying. I'm just moving these little packets of bits around like electronic postcards. The consequence of that is that the provider of that network is no longer providing the application level service, but primarily just the ability to move bits around. And the value that comes from the uh, bits themselves isn't necessarily realized by the party that's carrying those packets. And that problem of, uh, of extracting uh, more revenue out of value raises a variety of issues in the American uh, uh, setting in particular because of the lack of competition among broadband providers. Well, certainly as you point out, uh, you know, business models have evolved certainly over the last decade, whether it's online advertising models, uh, subscription models, and you know, the, inter the Internet seems to have driven a lot of innovation, certainly on the technology side, but also in the area of business models. And how much of that do you attribute to the openness of the Internet? Uh, certainly a great deal because the Internet uh, has generally not dictated what applications it would support. People just put their applications up and they try them out. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But, you know, Amazon and uh, Google and eBay and, uh, you know, Skype and all the others didn't have to get permission from every ISP in the world to put their applications up. They just put them up and the meaning of the packets was interpreted at the edges of the net by the software and the browsers or by whatever other application you were running. That's really been important and that's something I think we need to preserve because the value of having this communications capability is in part the openness that, uh, with which people can try out their new ideas. Well, Tell me, after all that we've seen unfold over this last decade, what do you think this next decade has in store for us? Well, you touched on several of the things that I think are, are evident. More uh, mobile access to the network, an increasing amount of internet. Only about a quarter of the world's population is thought to have access to the internet today. I would like that to be at least in the 80s, if not 90% range sometime soon. Um, the other thing would be increased demand for high-speed access, not necessarily to move huge amounts of data around, but also to get very low response time mm -hmm. for some interactive collaborative work. Uh, at Google, we're seeing a great deal of interest in collaborative technology where multiple parties are working together on common documents where you can see in real time changes that people are making and debate these uh, with packet voice and so on. Uh, I also uh, think that we will see an increasing amount of sensor equipment on the network Smart Grid being one potential example of that. That plus, of course, uh, our hope that the uh, interplanetary network will actually evolve as new missions get launched. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that these um, spacecraft 
perform their primary mission. Mm -hmm. And when they finish it, they're still there. They're out there with power and uh, computing and communications. They can be repurposed as communication relays. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of imagine this slow but steady growth of an interplanetary backbone. Another peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer uh, approach. Peer-to-peer arrangement. Uh, and as long as everybody adopts the same protocols. It turns out TCP IP doesn't work too well over interplanetary distances. So we had to develop something new. We called it bundle protocol. It's one of an example of a delay and disruption tolerant networking mm -hmm. system. But that is now coming to a, a major milestone. Uh, and we, we the, the JPL and NASA people, are offering this freely, openly, with open source to anyone who wants to implement and use it. And we've discovered that it may actually work uh, terrestrially to help mobile communication, which itself is often disrupted. And so if these protocols will improve our ability to use slightly disrupted or, or materially disrupted communication resources, so much the better. Well, you certainly outlined a future that has more users, more usage scenarios, and uh, certainly more traffic. Any uh, thoughts or feedback you have for the networking industry on uh, well, how we should approach it? It seems that, uh, that the economics of networking uh, may not necessarily uh, have an economy of scale that we are hoping for. Uh, the, the rate at which we're demanding bits to be transferred through the network is increasing faster than we can drive the cost down for moving those bits. And if that is a correct analysis, then we're going to have to step back and ask ourselves a couple of things. First, can we drive those costs down in spite of the rapid demand? And second, are the business models on top of which internet service provision and applications are based are those business models going to have to adapt to uh, a factual uh, discovery that there is a diseconomy hiding in this system? I hope the answer is we'll figure out how to get rid of the diseconomy if there is one, and, but that's going to be a big challenge for the networking community. Well, Vin, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to join us today and sharing your thoughts and insights. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Well, I always enjoy these things, Kevin. Thanks. <laughs>